As the migrant crisis between the European Union and Belarus continues to spiral, Russian President Vladimir Putin is signaling that his ally may have gone too far, at least in one regard. Putin, in televised comments on Saturday, said that his Belarus counterpart, Alexander Lukashenko, didn't consult with him before the Belarus president threatened earlier to cut the flow of natural gas from Russia to Europe, which moves through his country. Putin is saying here that such a move would risk Belarus's ties to Moscow, that he'd spoken to Lukashenko twice before the threat and it never came up, never was even hinted at, that it would cause great damage damage to European energy, and that he'll talk to Lukashenko again to make sure this wasn't something he'd said in the heat of the moment. Moving on, according to Russian state-owned news agency Sputnik, Russia has started delivering the S-400 surface to air missile systems to India. Deliveries are going as planned. India had signed a $5 billion deal with Russia in October 2018. To buy five units of the air defense missile system, India made the first tranche of the payment by around $800 million to Russia in 2019. A group of 100 Indian Army personnel were sent to Russia earlier this year to begin training on how to operate the system. The S-400 is known as Russia's most advanced long-range surface-to-air missile defense system. It is a complex air defense missile system consisting of radars, control systems and different types of missiles. It was developed in the 1990s by Russia and has been in service with the Russian Armed Forces since 2007. It was supposed to be the summit that would stop global warming, but now there's deep disappointment with environmentalists saying COP26 fell far short of the urgent action that's needed. Negotiations in Glasgow went on beyond the deadline as draft after draft came closer to producing a global agreement to restrict greenhouse gases. But the final document was met with anger after India scuppered its key provision to phase out coal power. Most countries agreed on new and more ambitious targets for reducing emissions. But the pledges fell short of what science says is needed to stop the world from heating beyond a dangerous 1.5 degrees Celsius. India insisted on a last-minute watering down of the final text, changing references of a coal phase out to a phase down. In an intense gunfight in India's western state of Maharashtra, a unit of the state police has neutralized 26 Naxalites in the district of Gachiroli. The C-60 unit of Maharashtra police was engaged in the gunfight with the Naxals in the forest along the Chhattisgarh border, about 9,000 kilometers away from India's financial capital, Mumbai. The encounter followed, uh, it, it came after a commando team began combing operations in the forest in the morning. Three police personnel have also suffered injuries in the crossfire. This is being touted as a huge success for the security forces in combating inland terror. Authorities, volunteers and relatives kept searching on Friday for the dozens missing and feared dead in Lake Kivu after a boat capsized on Thursday in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Locals say 15 bodies were recovered and at least 34 people remained missing since Thursday. Locals say about 60 people were rescued alive father of nine, Alexis Simba, lost two of his children and his wife in the shipwreck. They waited anxiously outside Littoral Penitentiary to find out the fate of their loved ones. No! <laughs> Some families got the news that they had feared the most. Dozens of inmates were killed here and over a hundred left injured after fighting erupted overnight Friday. 
Officials say the violence was triggered by fighting among rival drug trafficking gangs in the prison. Some inmates were vying to take control of the facility after a gang leader's release earlier on Friday left a power vacuum. Ecuadorian President Guillermo Lasso took to Twitter to express his condolences to the families of the victims. He also called on authorities to allow the military to enter prisons instead of only providing outside security. South African novelist Wilbur Smith has died at the age of 88. More than 140 million copies of some 49 adventure stories have been sold around the globe. Smith was born in northern Rhodesia, now Zambia. He gained widespread recognition following the publication of his debut novel, when the Lion Feeds, 1964. The story of a young man growing up on a South African Kittle ranch in the shadow of the Zulu Wars and the Gold Rush quickly became a bestseller. Since then, he has never stopped writing with his latest novel, The New Kingdom, published this year. A newsletter on Smith's website announced that he had passed away unexpectedly in his Cape Town home. Sudanese security forces killed at least five demonstrators Saturday in a crackdown on anti-coup protest after the military tightened its grip by forming a new ruling council. The pro-democracy protest comes nearly three weeks after top general Abdel Fattah al-Burhan ousted the government, detained the civilian leadership and declared a state of emergency. The Independent Central Committee for Sudanese Doctors said three of the diseased were killed in East Khartoum and two in Khartoum's twin city of Obdeman. Four of the victims were shot dead while one died from suffocation by tear gas.